All right, so we're checking out the uh, NV L20 electric bike in this video. Uh, it's a little bit windy here, so I apologize in advance for any of the wind noise. So uh, I'll try and put some subtitles on this video in case you can't hear me. Uh, so this is their latest uh, e-bike. It's kind of a, I would say a cargo e-bike with a little bit of off-road capability. 20 inch um, fat tires, uh, 20 by four inch knobby wheel fat tires. You have the uh, mag uh, rims, mag style rims and uh, step through style here. So it's got that easy to sort of climb in and out of the bike. And you've got racks on the front and the rear to carry a lot of cargo. Uh, 264 pounds of total weight capacity on this bike. Uh, adjustable seat height, uh, five foot, I think, to six foot eight, I believe, is the range I put up here on the screen, the uh, clip from the product page. Got some uh, BMX style handlebars. Um, that's adjustable forwards and backwards, so pretty much you can adjust it to wherever is comfortable for you. Okay, so we've got a pretty big battery here. It's a 48 volt, 13 amp hour, 624 watt hour battery. Uh, can we claim a range of up to 90 miles. That's probably on pedal assist and in ideal conditions, no wind, flat terrain, etc. So obviously in real world situations, it's probably gonna be something less. It really depends on your uh, situation. If you're on a lot of hills, if you're uh, riding a really super fast, of course your range is gonna be less. That's pretty standard when it comes to e-bikes. In the rear, we have a 750 watt hub motor. It does burst to 900 watts. 160 millimeter rotors here in the back. Um, mechanical disc brakes. They're not branded, so I don't know who makes them, but they do seem to work fairly well, or well enough, at least for this particular bike. And, uh, you know, it was adjusted well out of the factory. 160 millimeter rotors here in the front as well. And again, the, the brand of the brake caliper itself, I don't know who makes it. And of course we have a front fork suspension here with a lockout and a tension adjustment. Standard uh, Shimano Turney uh, seven speed derailleur here in the back with a seven uh, gear cassette. You pay attention to this derailleur guard here. Sometimes in shipment it can get pushed into the derailleur. Mine was fine, did not need any sort of adjustment. But you, in case it is pushed in, you just pull it back. Um, it uh, does have a tendency to bend in some hard hits while in shipment. Seat height is adjustable here. You can just adjust this latch and then you can pull the seat up like so to take the battery out. You do have to have the key in and it locked in place for the bike to turn on. It does seem like when it's locked, you can't take the key out. So it's a little bit weird. They usually will take the key out uh, so that the, the battery will stay in here. But yeah, the key uh, is needed for this to be uh, operational. All right, here's the uh, bike display. Long press the button on the top to turn it on. Not that easy to read. It's it's actually easier to see uh, in person than uh, via the camera. Doesn't pick it up that well. You have the battery uh, gauge here, totally full. Your speedometer, your pedal assist level, and then you have your odometer and total miles. Standard grip here on the left. Nothing special there. Again, BMX style handlebar here. SIS shifter here on the top, a pretty standard entry level. Then you've got a half twist throttle here. A lot of the NV bikes have this. Uh, I actually prefer the half twist throttle. I like those a lot. The um, brake levers, the brake levers on this model have this sort of rubber grip here, which is kind of nice. A lot of them just are bare metal, so it does help in gripping their lever. The frame here is 6062 aluminum. Uh, I'm not sure how much better that is versus standard, you know, sort of e-bike 6061 aluminum, but feels fairly strong. The welds and everything are decent. Uh, not, not amazing looking, but, you know, good enough. The bike feels solid. Uh, the paint here is uh, powder coated black. It is available also in white, green, and pink, I believe. It does have a headlight in the front here. You long press that bottom button to turn it on. It's decent enough in terms, it's pretty, it's a standard type of e-bike light. Not super bright, but good enough. Uh, but it is attached to the rack here. So it's a little, I don't know, uh, when you turn, uh, it, it, so it's pointing, you know, basically straight forward and doesn't turn with the handlebar. So some people tend to not like that, but that's just the way it is on this particular model. And of course there's a rear brake light 
and it is activated by the levers, of course. No turn signals in this one. So overall, the build of the bike was fairly straightforward. Um, you have to keep in mind that this cable here, as you're looking at it from the seating position, the one that comes out of the bottom here and goes up, it does have to be on the left because the, the rack here has a little retention bar that holds it in place as you're turning the handlebar. Um, if you put it on the other side, it won't actually work because it'll, it looks, I mean, you can, you can pretty much tell here that it's going to be too short if it's uh, wrapped around the other side. So that's a mistake I made. Um, you have to make sure it's coming off of this side here. And of course it matches the rack. So you got to put the handlebar on these four bolts here. It's really straightforward. Uh, at that point, I put the fender on. I put the fender on. Then I attach the wheel. That's pretty standard. Then I attach the front rack, these four screws here, and then attach the front light and charge up the battery, put in the seat. Um, charging does take, uh, from empty to full, I think it takes about six to eight hours, they mentioned approximately. It's not super fast charging, I think it's like a two amp charger. And of course, you know, you, it comes with all the standard tools, instruction manual, and of course the charger is included as well. And you can, in fact, uh, charge it out of the bike or in the bike, it doesn't really matter, it's your choice. But the charge port is over here on this side, there's a little cover, you pull this back, and this is where you're gonna charge it. But uh, yeah, I, you can take it off, pull off the, uh, unlock the battery, pull it out, and charge it off of the bike if you so feel. So the max uh, rating on the, the racks here says 25 kilograms to the rear. And then the front one is 13 kilograms. All right, so let's go ahead and get on the bike and I'll give you my thoughts on its speed and riding characteristics. All right, a quick word from Gulu and their GT160 portable tire inflator. This is gonna be a great product for those of you that uh, want something a little portable and compact, can uh, inflate uh, obviously things like car tires, bike tires, uh, also things like basketballs, volleyballs, etc. sports equipment. Uh, also could be po possibly used for like uh, kayaks and inflatable canoes, that kind of stuff, but not 100% sure about that. So of course I uh, get a lot of uh, e-bikes for review and this is going to be a great product to inflate those tires because a lot of them come fairly flat from the factory. It's very easy to use to put your pressure settings in and just go ahead and turn it on. It'll go in and inflate your tires. This can also be used as a portable power bank. It does have about 27, 28 watt hours of capacity. So you can use this as a uh, portable power bank for your smartphones and other USB devices. If you'd like to check out this product, there'll be a link down in the video description. And thanks again to Gulu for sending this very useful product to me. All right, so we're gonna do a standard um, speed test using pedal assist first and then throttle. Uh, that's what I usually do with my videos and then uh, put my backpack here in the front might as well take advantage of the uh, uh, Cargo carrying capacity of the bike. So we're going ahead and just start pedaling And Not much pedal assist in level one don't really even hear the motor at all All right, let's go to uh, level two All right, so in level one, we were, we were going like maybe five, six miles an hour. Level two, about nine miles an hour now. And I still don't hear the motor at all. Very silent. Let's go to level three. All right, now that you can hear the motor. So it's definitely a cadence sensor on this bike. And we're about 13 miles an hour. So that was level three. This is uh, on a road here, 13 miles an hour, and then I am freewheeling a little bit. All right, so bump it up to level four. Definitely freewheeling. Going about 18 miles an hour now in level four on pedal assist. We're going to five. 22 miles an hour. 
23. Uh, that's about it. Maxed out, okay, but maxed out at 24 miles an hour on pedal assist. I think the max rating is 25 miles an hour, so I'm a bit heavier rider, so not surprising. It's a little bit less. All right, so now we're going to start level one again. Uh, now we're just going to do throttle only, no pedaling. And yeah, just barely a little bit of motor help there. Not going fast at all, about five miles an hour. It's about the same as on pedal assist. Uh, let's go to two now. Okay, here a little bit of motor whirring there. Eight miles an hour. It's a little bit less than when pedaling, I think it was like nine or 10 on pedal assist on level two. On throttle, it's a little bit less, eight miles an hour. So level three. 13. They got the same as on pedal assist. 14. I'm oh, sorry, level four. 18 miles an hour. At level five. Throttle only. 22. 23. 24. So, it does build up speed very slowly and gradually. But yeah, I did get up to 24 again. So I think the, the speed levels are pretty similar on throttle only uh, compared to pedal assist only. You do have the ability to just twist the throttle part of the way and get partial speed and not the full speed. So I usually just go to like, I don't know, for me, I think uh, level three on full throttle is plenty fast enough. Yeah, I'm getting 13 miles an hour on the sidewalk here. So, okay, let's talk about the ride. Very smooth. Um, shocks work pretty well in these little cracks on the sidewalk. I hardly feel anything. Um, there's no rear suspension, so you do feel a little bit of the bumps on this seat. Uh, so if you do want a wider seat or something that is uh, perhaps um, a little bit softer, then yeah, there are you'd have to go to some third-party alternatives. But I, I do like the fact that you can kind of sit back you know with these handlebars you can't adjust the angle forward or backwards if you want to lean forward more more and you can adjust the height of the seat this is pretty comfortable for me although i know some of you bike raiders out there think that i need to be up a way higher but i prefer a lower center of gravity just i just feel more stable having a lower seat height um, most of the time on these e-bikes i'm not really pedaling anyway i'm just using the throttle but ride seems comfortable enough let's keep going here so these do have uh, 20 by four inch knobby fat tires. So you can go do a little bit off-roading here. We'll go into the grass here right now. And no problem. No problem going through grass. Although not really my, one of my, fa one of my favorite surfaces. Yes, yeah, so overall, uh, pretty decent e-bike. Um, I like the fact that it's sort of tuned for cargo carrying, so it can carry additional weight. It comes with the extra cargo racks. Very nice ride. A uh, little bit wider base, I think, compared to most 20-inch fat tire e-bikes. Again, to carry the extra cargo, just feel more stable. Uh, overall, uh, pretty good quality e-bike. Uh, there'll be a link down in the video description to this. Also, there's going to be like some sort of Father's Day sale during the month of June. Link to some other bikes with some discounts as well will be down in the video description. That'll cover for this video. Um, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Talk to you guys in the next one.